hello everybody. Okay, I don't have any feedback of the sound. Do you hear me? Or? Ah, okay. All right, I thought I have to speak up maybe. I'm here to present you um, Daybed. Uh, it's a special, it's a storage as a service with a special component, but uh, it's not a special it's for Daybed. Um, it's a tool uh, targeted at front-end developers, the REST API, and I hope you like it. I'm Mathieu Leclerc. Um, I've been working with Postis a lot, and I maintain a dozen of uh, leaflet plugins. So you might have crossed my name there. Um, and I'm mainly a JavaScript and Python developer. And I just uh, answer about Mozilla in December. You can find those the slides of this presentation at this address. Um, you won't have the time to copy it anyway, so <laughs> if you want. I would like to think a little bit about how you build a simple application where uh, users can let's say, pin, um, put pins on the map and, and other users uh, would uh, get them back. Well, like a share or a sharing location, location sharing uh, application. Usually what you do is like, okay, you need somewhere to persist your data. So basically you have a very good ID, a uh, very good ID comes up in your mind and you would like, you easily build the JavaScript part, the web mapping part. Then you would ask a backend developer to develop the, an API, a web API and deploy it. And then you're good, you have your uh, JavaScript uh, code talking to some server API. Um, basically what Daybed does is to skip that part and allows you to think about an ID, implement the JavaScript, and you just have to plug it on the Daybed backend. So um, you don't need the uh, backend developers anymore, or you don't have to put your hands in deployments of APIs and stuff like that. So um, how how did Daybed come up in our mind? Uh, basically, I was working in a services company where every time I was asked to develop uh, some application where uh, uh, where users could upload geographic data and others could get, get, get it back. So like mobile application where you share the location or where you take a picture of a speci specific flower and upload the, the data and then users can see the map of all flowers and stuff like that. So it was always the same, a collaborative uh, spatial app and and I was tired of always deploying, uh, coding APIs, just changing a few fields, uh, deploying it, and, and I was tired of that. So I wanted to do something uh, to prevent us to reinvent the wheel. And another friend uh, was uh, thinking of a Google Form alternative. So uh, basically an open source version of Google Form. And we, we talked together and realized that we would that we could develop uh, a web API that could be reusable, like, like you just define your model there, push, push some data and get it back. It would also allow us uh, to prototype web application very easily so that maybe you have a customer, he's talking about something, you just implement it a very small prototype and you can show it to him very like, uh, live like a few hours later you have something working so it has kind of a wow effect if you do things quickly regarding that part regarding sharing and collaboration <laughs> the bed is not another dbms it's uh, it's very too na it's uh, way too naive for the for for pretending to be a very strong dbms um it's not a framework either because uh, it's a web api we are not tied to any library or client, it's just HTTP. It's not the, um, the golden armor because it won't solve the all the problems or all the, the, the situations where you need um, where you need an API, but it can solve many of them. And we are not a company with the business business plan. 
We are basically a bunch of friends uh, experimenting uh, with a shared vision. And David is a way to explore that thing, that, that direction of, uh, of, uh, <laughs> of our vision. So what is David? David is a simple REST API uh, that you can use with uh, any HTTP client. That can be a mobile phone in iOS or, or the Objective-C code. Um, you can be like a Python script or whatever, Bash script or whatever. You, as long as you can perform HTTP requests, you can talk to David. Oh, and of course, uh, your, prefer your preferred browser. Browser. You can have it. Browser. But um, <laughs> uh, and it's of course, it's open source. Uh, there is the license. And the thing is, you deploy it once. Before, you uh, maybe you were sharing the same database for many servers, many APIs. Um, but the thing is, now with Debat, you just have one instance, one, one instance of your backend. And all your client applications will connect to the same one. So you deploy it once, and then you use it very intuitively. May an idea comes up in, in your mind. Then you think of the models, relations, permissions, the fields of your model, the types of the fields of your model. You put everything in a JSON. You push it to, the, to David. And that's it. You have a, you have a, your endpoint where you can then in your code create records, push them, post them there on your on the the, the, end, the endpoint of your model. And then with the using a get request, you get all the records and you can, for example, populate a map. Under the hood, it's using PyArmy. It's a Python framework. Cornit, which is like a API toolkit on top of of PyArmy. Conander is used to validate the, the, the data against the schema. And Redis is used as the default backend for persistence. But you can uh, you, you could you we also have CodeDB and you could also if you're motivated develop a PostgreSQL backend as long uh, as it fits the, the vision. And we're using Elasticsearch to index and provide a search engine and, and fast routing and stuff like that. So you can see Debed as um, as a layer that provides record validation, authentication, and permissions on top of a NoSQL database. That's basically the way you could define it. And of course, I'm here today because it has some special features. And the basic thing thing we has it has is um, geometric field type. So you define your model using strings, integers. Uh, booleans, and also you can have points, lines, polygons, GeoJSON, and et cetera. You can get the records of in GeoJSON, and you have also a special indexing. When you define your model, you just give the list of fields, the list of permission, and you get two, two endpoints. The permission, is, uh, the permission system is very easy. It's a metric between uh, user ID, roles, <coughs> and permission. So you, you can say, like, Users can modify their own records, can modify, can create, everybody can create records, but only the owner of the record can modify or delete it, and stuff like that. You know, all the basic things you, you would imagine. Mm, since it's targeted, uh, uh, targeted at uh, front-end developers, we've built a small JS, uh, JavaScript um, um, wrapper. It will basically generate an HTTP request, set up the authentication scheme. We, we're using OAuth to pass some, uh, some signing and stuff that can be tricky to do it by hand in JavaScript. So you, we, do, we do that for you. And some methods to help you syncing and sharing records. We host it online if, in case you, you need. So I'll show you very quickly. Um, uh, how to build a very simple collaboration uh, mm, collaborative map application using a few lines of code. So the JSON, everything is JSON. We, we 
we create a definition of, of our models with the list of fields. So here we have a location and the location which is a point in a label which is a string. Uh, you do what you want. Permission, we allow everybody to create records. Everybody can read everyone's record and everybody can update and delete everyone's record. That means it's kind of uh, a wiki or bad permission scheme, like everybody can do anything. Um, in a model, you put the definition and the permission, and then you start a session on, on the Zabot server, and you save the model that you, that you, that you find. And that's it, it's gone. That, that creates the model on the, back on the back end. To get the record, um, by default, it returns basic uh, JSON, so if you want real JSON, you provide a content type uh, header, so you just give the, the name type of uh, the JSON. To get the record, the permit returns you the JSON, and here it's a leaflet, uh, leaflet uh, line. Using leaflet, you put the JSON on the map. I use leaflet here because it, it, it has very short uh, syntax and, and initialization, uh, but of course it's agnostic. You can use the one you want, like OpenAI of three. Um, to create a record, what you do here is like when you do double click on the map, you get the location of the mouse, and and you save the record on the back end. So on double click, get the point. Uh, the best joke of uh, web mapping is that uh, leaflet uh, chose to use uh, lat long instead of long lat. But anyway, so um, using the same mechanism, you do save record, give the model ID, create a record, so that would be a new record. The label, I just put a string here at the building, the location I give the point I just got on the under the mouse. And that's it, when it's done, you get the record back and you put the marker on the map. You also obtain the record ID on the database so you can associate it to the layer. So here on double click, I create a marker and store it on the back end. And on when I click on the marker, on the pin, I delete it from the, from, from, from the back end. So here on click, I do session, delete record, using the model uh, uh, as well. And I get back the record ID I was uh, I, I obtained on the slide before. When it's done, I remove the map from the from the layer. It's a very simple example. We support all REST verbs and and like put, patch, delete, and everything. So here it's the demo. Double click, uh, creates a new marker. You click on it, and it deletes it. It's online. I don't know if you can see the the app, but it's online. And you can see it's like maybe 40 lines of code or something like that. And it's you can see all those markers and that you see on the screen now. To build collaborative applications, you will have to share your credentials, like you share your user, I user ID and stuff like that, or your permissions. So to do that, you we use a token system. And a very simple way to share tokens between friends or collaborators is to put it in the, in the URL. So in this very simple example, what I do is I take the token from the URL, start the session using this token, and that's it. I'm, I'm connected as, uh, with, uh, with this credential, so I can get specific permissions using that token. So it's a very, very easy system to build collaborative applications. For spatial record, uh, we use Elasticsearch, as I say. So every time you create a model, the Elasticsearch mappings are created automatically, and when you create records, they are indexed as well. It supports uh, geometric types, so that's fantastic, because um, that's what we want here, by kind of, kind of what I'm, uh, that's why I'm here today. Uh, Elasticsearch provides you a bounding box search and a distance calculation like distance searching or aggregation. And it provides you like a clustering, server side clustering. So it's, it can be very helpful when you have lots of data. 
and it's the best web companion because it's basically it's used everywhere. It's very powerful. It scales. It's very performant, and it provides you all the data set manipulation you expect, like sourcing, paginating, aggregation, counting. <coughs> very very helpful. So to talk to Elasticsearch, you define your query in JSON. So it's a bit verbose, but it expects that. So here, for example, the um, name of our model was named location. So what we do is we do a geo-bound inbox filter on the field location. And that piece of code is basically four coordinates, like uh, the uh, four values that gives the extent of the bounding box you want to, to filter. So, and then you using that query, you using the data.js, you search the report using this query and you get the reference in the in the panel. So in this little demo that's online as well, what I do is I loaded uh, the 3,500 pizzerias of Italia in, in the daybed model, and when I zoom in the map, I perform a spatial extent uh, search on Elasticsearch here in daybed. And it's very, it's very, it's very quick, it's very snappy. Um, and I didn't have to implement anything on the back end. I was just exploiting the capabilities of Daybed. So to bring a conclusion, I would say that uh, Daybed is fantastic. It's, an er it's a genery API, generic API, and it's reusable, and it helps you to create very small, rather small application, but very quickly. So it means that you have no effort to do on the back end, you can quickly start. It's very, very cool for demoing, prototyping, or you want to share the best restaurants uh, in your neighborhood. You do a custom application where you just put some data. You can share the spots of uh, the mushroom, mushrooms location in your area, whatever. I don't know, <laughs> do what you want. Um, the thing is, uh, the API is logicless. Like it's generic, so you don't have any business rules on the back end. That would imply to provide a little bit more work on the client, uh, of course, uh, because uh, the only capabilities we provide uh, uh, are in regards to Elastic Elasticsearch capabilities. So my vision is like you have a very stupid back end, stupid mm, like logicless back end, and stuff like search on the client, which is a um, geospatial toolkit in JavaScript. And, and that's it. So next time you have an idea or use case, just think about it before deploying, implementing your own backend. Just think about it. And as long as we know we are the only open source uh, solution that, that does that, there are some commercial providers that do just similar stuff, but we are the only one use having an open source solution for that. So think twice before implementing a custom backend and get in touch if in case you have questions. Because I'm, I think I'm running out of time now for questions. And it's okay. Well, as you want. If you have any questions, then rather now or after the after <coughs> the, the talk. Okay, five minutes. Okay, that's fine. Um, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, we 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 implemented very simple relations like uh, one off, any off, and I think that's basically it. But uh, we don't so far we don't we don't provide any strong constraints between those relations. Stuff you would expect, like um, when you remove it from one side, it will like trigger a cascade or a constraint error or stuff like that. We d we don't we don't do it yet. I mean, it's still yeah. That's not against our vision. It's just that it takes time to provide a a very strong system to to do that. And also, what I had in mind is to provide. Uh, relation reversing, like when you define a model that has a relation in one one way, 
than from the other model, you can explore like the, the data set from, from the other way. That, that is not available right now, but it's part of our vision. So stay tuned. Yeah, um, yes, uh, we use uh, OAuth, which is a uh, token-based uh, authentication. So if you, you just ask for a token, and then you use this token to for your, your, your operation. So you just first, you arrive, you ask for a token, and using this token, you create a model. That means the model you've just created is associated to this token. That means this token is the owner of this new model. To get the special search through Elasticsearch, you need the read all records permission because you don't want to allow searching in the whole collection if you don't have the permission to read all records. So you, we are like, uh, regarding Elasticsearch, we behave like a proxy because it's not exposed directly. <coughs> it's behind Debed and Debed just check that this token has the permission to perform uh, a search or reading all the, the records. So it's very, it's, it's it we had in mind uh, the, the our main use case is like you create a JavaScript application, you put it on GitHub pages and it runs. You don't have any to set up anything regarding authentication, open ID, anything. You just make sure it takes the token and and behave and op operates using this token. That does this answer your question? Okay. Well, thank you for uh, your attention. <laughs>